Hello everyone, Mark with High Tech Legion. In this video we're going to take a look at what I have underneath this cover. It's a new product being released from a manufacturer that many of you I'm sure know, Corsair. So make sure you come back and stay tuned for the unveiling. Now let's just take a moment and pretend that we're at the new car show and the concept car has just rolled up under tarp and everybody's standing around in anticipate, anticipation waiting to see what's going to be unveiled. Here we have a new full tower case from Corsair. This is the 780T and let's go ahead and take a look. Now when I first took this out of the case myself I noticed this nice mesh fabric bag that is wrapped around the case to protect it during shipment. I also noticed a few other things uh, made to protect the case during shipment. Um, at the, along the top here, uh, the top mesh panel is very easily removable. Um, it just pushes clips and locks in place. So what they've done is put some masking tape along the top and they have one side nicely folded over so it is easy to peel right off the top of the case there. And they've also done the same on the front of the case, as we can see here. And like I said, one side is pressed nicely so it does peel. It does take a little of the plastic of the front of the case with it as you peel it off. That's okay because you'll be removing that anyway. And now let's see why they put that tape. Well, because as we can see here, the front of the case, with a simple click, we have our mesh our metal mesh on the outside, nice plastic cage on the inside, and also a nice filter. So the filter itself isn't only removable, the whole front of the case is. Very easy to clean that filter. And behind it, we can see the two 140 millimeter fans that Corsair has included and mounted to the front of the case. Also, in the front of the case here, there is space for um, a one, two, three, 60 millimeter radiator in the front of the case. Again, this simply sets into the bottom of the case, pushes and locks in place. We have seen that on other Corsair cases. Um, this one is really nice because it's that whole front mesh panel with the Corsair logo, everything embedded right into the front. On the top, the same thing. A simple push, click, and it removes. We'll go ahead and take a look at that later once we get the case laid down for you guys to take a look at the top panels. And we could also see on the front of the case here, two external five and a quarter inch drive bays. If we take a look at the side window panel, this case is beautiful. All the exterior that really gives it these nice lines, this nice curved, it's even got a little hood that overhangs in the front of the case here has a very nice appearance and for the size of this case being a full tower case it's not that heavy it's a very nice case to work with now the side panels here you can see our nice window here has a nice curved edge to it so it's a very nice finish on the outside you can see everything inside the case without a problem and our side panel with a simple lift comes right off. Metal side panel, we can see our retaining clips here for our nice plexiglass window. If you wanted to remove that, if you wanted to do some custom work, that can be removed along with the whole plastic hinge that's here, or plastic latch assembly I should say, that can also be removed. So that would leave just your bare metal side panel to, you know, maybe paint do some kind of custom work, whatever you wanted to get into. Inside here, we can take a look at the case and very clean inside. We can see all of our grommets for cable management through to the back of the case, which there is plenty of room behind the motherboard tray for cable management. We can see all of our cabling run to the front here um, for our front panel, our fan, our fan cables, um, all of our normal front panel accessories and also for our fan speed controller that is on the top of the case, 
our reset, our two USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, headphone, microphone, and of course, power button. Here we have our three and a half inch hard drive base that also have our holes for our SSDs to screw in from the bottom. All toolless, simply unclip, clip into place, and here we can see Corsair has included our accessory kit. And at the top here, our five and a quarter inch bays for your DVD drives, hard drives, fan controllers are also toolless. We'll go ahead and put the side panel back on. Again, simply lift up that handle, it locks in place, easy removal. No fighting with thumb screws, nothing to hassle with. On the back of the case here, we also see our adjustable one 40 millimeter fan that is included and it also has slots here for a 120 millimeter fan. It is height adjustable, it's about maybe an inch and a quarter of movement up or down so that you can align it with your motherboard or with your processor cooler. And extra ventilation in the top of the case here, possibly if you were to have a radiator mounted in the top because it is capable of that, there's some ventilation to pull some air into your fans even through the rear of the case, not just through those fans pulling air through the front. We can see our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine expansion slots on the back for your graphics cards, your uh, motherboards that have multiple setups capable. You have nine expansion slots. You do have stamped in here uh, holes for water cooling, but they're not just a hole in the case. It's not a little rubber grommet. Um, a lot of people, and especially with the flexibility inside this case for water cooling, you may not need to mount something externally. If you wanted to, these could just be popped out. But if you didn't want to, they are pretty solid in the back of the case, so you wouldn't have just two holes with a rubber grommet in it not doing anything. And then here we see in, our, in the bottom of our case our mount for our power supply. If we go ahead, take a look at the back side panel. Again here, if you can't see, we have our nice black feet that extrude from the side of the case, making the case very uh, sturdy and stable. So the back side panel here, again, we just have our clip lift up, side panel removes. Same way as the other, we can see where there's just a slight indentation, a little bit of aesthetics, nice white finish, not too glossy, um, just a very nice finish to the case. And we have our accessory bag. So here we have all of our cables that are fed through to the uh, front of the case that should probably have the twist tie taken off so they'd feed through here a little bit easier. And okay, they want to fight with me, so we'll get back to that later. And we also have back here one, two, three tool-free SSD brackets. So to not inflict with our six hard drive trays that are in the front of the case, they are set back a little bit, but you can see the SSD would slide, this little latch would hold it in place. So you would slide, push it in, it would lock into place here, and this little latch would hold it in place. There's also screw or holes on the side that you could screw it into place. And of course, with easy access here to where your, to where your SATA data cable and power cable would plug in. Again, when we go into the installation of the accessories um, and our components later on in this video, we will get into the actual mounting with an SSD into this bracket. They simply line up with the notches on the front of the case and then the latch in the back clips and locks in. So it's very secure in place. One, two, three. SSD brackets. Let's take a little closer look at our cables running from the front of the case here. It seems like a lot of cables. Well, let's show you why. We have our USB 3.0 header for our two USB 3.0 ports. We also have our USB 2.0 for our two USB 2.0 ports. Roughly the same length. Then we have a longer cable for our audio. Why is that longer? Because most of the time the audio, most of the times the audio port is all the way over here on the motherboard. We can see a nice 
little uh, rubber grommet here to fit that some of those cables through that might connect way over here on the motherboard. Also, one thing that I must mention about this case, for the 8-pin CPU connector that is usually way up here on your motherboard, there is a rubber grommet for coming through to the back side. However, the opening here, and that would go through to the rubber grommet, the 8-pin power supply cable will fit through here nicely. I know a lot of cases have a hole here for the 8-pin, and they have a grommet, and they have this allocated to make it easy to feed that cable through but not a lot of cases have provided a large enough hole so that that eight pin, if it's either a one eight pin instead of being two separate four pins, will fit very easily through. And this with Corsair has provided more than adequate enough space here. We can also see the large opening for mounting your CPU cooler backplate. There's more than enough space for any size CPU cooler backplate that you might have. So here we can see we have a lot of different connectors. Okay, we'll get out of the way here. Our, of course, hard drive reset button, power switch, hard drive LED, and power LEDs. We'll get those out of the way. And we'll take a look at what all these other cables are for. So next we have here our one, two, three, four, five connectors for our fans. Now they are just three pin connectors, even though they are uh, four wide. So you could put a four uh, pin PWM fan. You could plug that in here and control it via the uh, three speed fan controller on the top. They've also given us two power options, a Molex and a SATA power option for that, uh, for that top fan controller. So if you don't have any Molex in your case, you have the SATA power option as well. Five fans. The case comes included with three 140 millimeter fans. However, we could fit three 120 millimeter fans in the top, three 120 millimeter fans in the front, three in the bottom, or two in the bottom, I'm sorry, and one in the back. You could fit two 140 millimeter fans in the top, two 140 millimeter fans in the front, and two 140 millimeter fans in the bottom one 140 millimeter fan in the back. You could also fit a 360 radiator in the top, a 360 in the front, a 240 in the bottom, or a 280. You could fit a 280 or a 240 up here, a 280 or a 240 in the front, or a 120 or 140 millimeter fan uh, radiator in the back of the case. And I'm sorry, the bottom cannot fit a 280, the bottom can only fit a 240 millimeter rad. So 240, 240, 240, 280, 280, 360, 360. 120 or 140 millimeter radiator in the back. And also the same options with fans. Um, the case is made for airflow, it's made for water cooling. Uh, just, you know, pulling, opening this up from Corsair and having the capability for two 360 millimeter uh, radiators without any kind of modification two 280 millimeter radiators, a 240 in the bottom, a 120 or a 140 in the back, um, even if you're just air cooling. The case is optimized for airflow with the very easily removable filters. Um, we'll take a look here. Let's get some of these cables out of the way. And again, in the back of the case here, there is just ample space for cable routing behind the motherboard tray. We can see that there's all these little clips here in the metal for zip ties to tidy up our uh, cables very nicely and there is uh, probably about a good inch um, from in between the motherboard tray here and where the uh, side side panel would latch on here so there's plenty of space for your cables to be mounted in the back of the case and again with the ease of removing of the side panels and locking into place very simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom of the case. And again, for being a full tower case, it moves around very easily. Um, it is very easy to maneuver for its size. Now we can see here, ah uh, yes, more fan filters. So the bottom, if you were going to have your power supply mounted to be pulling air from the bottom of the case, we can see long enough for a long power supply here. 
or if it was just a shorter power supply. Either way, you have a filter covering you. We'll go ahead and slide that one back in place. Locks in and in the front as well. So you can see where our two fans would mount here or your radiator. Again, completely filtered. Very easy. These can be removed just from pulling at the front or the rear of the case. I just wanted to lay it down so you could get a look at the underneath and um, just the dimensions and you know the feet that are mounted here have a nice rubber bottom so it'll help prevent against vibration whether you have it on your desktop whether you have it sitting on your floor they are very sturdy they are plastic but they're molded plastic so they are very nice and and as we can see here the filters are very easily accessible when the case is standing upright so very easy to get to the filters very easy so easy to clean them out so let's go ahead and take a look at the top of the case so in the top of the case here, we can see our start stop button, which would be our power button, our reset button. Also looks like a little refresh arrow in your browser. Reset. Two USB 3.0, two USB 2.0. Here is our three speed fan controller, our microphone port, and our headphone jack. If we pan out a little here, Take a look at the rest of the top. Just like the front panel, clip unlatches, comes right off. The same metal mesh on the outside, nice plastic retention on the inside with your mesh filter inside here. Can be removed, no electronic components on it. You can take it, you can blow it off with you know, your compressed air or an air compressor, or you could even rinse this off, wash it if you'd like to. And then we can see our mounting here for our three fans. One, two, three. And they even have little rubber grommets here to help with uh, padding and vibration and also your mounts for your radiator. So lots of space in the top of the case. Um, slimmer fans may even fit underneath this shroud. We can see on the back of the shroud here, there's some, uh, it stands up a little bit. So I'm sure that we could fit case uh, fans maybe up to 25 millimeter on the top of the case, mount your radiator beneath that, and then fans beneath your radiator. So very possibly mounts for uh, dual fan setups inside your case uh, without having to have fans or radiators mounted outside of the case for better cooling solutions if you were going to mount radiators inside this case. So let's go ahead and have a look inside the case one more time. Again, that uh, hinge on the door is just such a nice feature that it very easily removes to gain uh, access to the inside of your components. All of our routing is excellent. All of our cabling for our front panel connectors with how much space is behind the motherboard tray. just all disappears. So we can see that there's plenty of space behind the motherboard tray for routing all of our cables, even if they were to be custom sleeved. Um, with different sleeving is a little bit more stiff. It makes it a little bit more difficult. There is plenty of space behind the motherboard tray to be able to route any cables that you would need. Um, inside the case here, we can see again our, our hard, drive, hard drive mounts here for six, three and a half inch or two and a half inch hard drives and just the two clips pushed together. And there are four mounting screws at the bottom for your two and a half inch hard drive or SSDs. And otherwise, these just flex to mount your three and a half inch hard drives. Slide back in, clip and lock in place. Up here are five and a quarter inch drives, our tool list. So your optical drives, your Blu-ray drives, uh, fan controllers, things like that, slide and lock into place very easily. Um, there are slots on the top of this top hard drive um, cage, because these are two independent cages that with these two Phillips screws can be removed and slid apart from one another. I'm going to take one of them out when I get into the build, so we will see that. Um, and also these two screws here removed, so both of these could be removed. So remember, we have three, hard, three SSD or two and a half inch hard drive back brackets in the back of the case. 
So if you were only going to have SSDs in your build, these could be removed, opening up the airflow from the 140 millimeter fans uh, from the front of the case to your graphics cards or the rest of your computer components, or you can have the capability for six, three and a half inch, or up to nine, two and a half inch hard drives in the case, or a combination of six, three and a half inch and three, two and a half inch. Um, it does look like there are the two mounting screws here so that this cage could be mounted on bottom, this would be mounted on top. They are universal and by the dimensions here you could um, probably purchase another one of these cages from Corsair. There are mounting brackets up here where it would slide and lock into place. The two screws here where it would screw into place. So it looks like there is, if they will have that option to purchase, you would have the availability for even more storage in the front of the case. Again, with the uh, mounting capabilities here, we have micro ATX, ATX, uh, extended ATX, and XL ATX. So even as a server chassis with a, with a larger server motherboard, we have all the option for storage inside the case. Um, the bottom of the case inside for our power supply here has nice rubber grommets so that when our power supply is sitting inside the case, the rubber grommets will prevent from vibration underneath our power supply. Fits in there very nicely, very snug against the back and the rubber grommets will prevent any vibration that the power supply might cause. We also have with our uh, Thermaltake Tough Power 850 watt, we have the option for a 120 millimeter fan still in front of the uh, power supply here at the bottom of the case. If these cages were removed, it would open up additional airflow that could be utilized at the bottom of the case. So depending on what you were using the computer for, uh, the options, the flexibility is really great. We have again our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine expansion slots on the back of the case, our punch out buttons for our water cooling, our 140 millimeter rear case fan that is adjustable up and down. That rounds out the case. We're gonna get into building. Before we do that, we can look at uh, some of the components that Corsair includes. In the little baggie here is our Graphite Series 780T Quick Start Guide. And then in the little box that simply comes inside one of these three and a half inch trays for all of our accessories and of course nicely logoed with the Corsair logo on the front we have all of our mounting screws and also uh, looks like four included zip ties some longer mounting screws for fans and the nice thing about our quick start guide here is that when we open it up it does go through the breakdown of everything that is included uh, with the case, the hard drive, the mesh front panels, the mesh top panels, the side panels, so it gives you an expanded view of all of the components, how everything comes apart. And then on the back, it has a breakdown of all of our mounting screws. So we can see our four zip ties, our four longer fan screws, um, and a breakdown of all the rest of the screws. So as we take these little baggies of hardware, out of the main baggie it's very easy to associate the different screws with our quick start guide here all right we're going to go ahead and get started our mounting our components inside the case so make sure you stay tuned and uh, we're going to get the power supply mounted in we're going to go ahead and get the motherboard mounted in and we'll be right back so here we can see that I have most of my components installed. I have the motherboard uh, with the memory and the processor mounted in. I have the power supply mounted in. I showed you earlier in the video how easy that was to mount through. And I have some of my wires uh, routed through very easily. This is our front panel uh, HD audio connector. So we can plug that there. And like I said, the nice grommet over on this side of the motherboard allows for these cables uh, with the connectors on this end to be plugged in very nicely and go right through the grommet and almost disappear. We have our front panel connectors here. We'll go ahead and get those plugged in. So now that we have those plugged in, you can see with the openness of the case here, it just makes everything very easy to work on, uh, very easy to route back through our grommets. We have our USB 3.0 connector. Uh, we're going to go ahead and plug in our 24 pin cable to the motherboard first. So with our 24 pin plugged in, we have our USB 3.0 header. 
right here and our USB 3.0 cable that runs to the front of our case. We can very easily mount that through here, plug it in. Goes right through the grommet there. And the wires are very, very hidden uh, throughout our case. So far I have my cable for my graphics card run from the power supply and my 24 and my 8 pin. My uh, cable length was 600 millimeters. I was able to route it behind the motherboard throughout the cutout in the top of the case very easily and plug it into both locations. I do have my two fan connectors up here for um, what I'm going to plug into my fans for my all-in-one CPU cooler. I do have the rest of the case fans already plugged in in the back to our fan controller that's on the top of the case. And I just have to route my SATA power uh, from my power supply to the back of the case to control the to power the fan controller and also my hard drives that I'll be using. Now we'll show you how easy it is to mount the hard drives, your standard three and a half inch hard drive inside your three and a half inch drive bay here, just like so. Done. And we have our two and a half inch hard drive back bracket on the rear of the case that I'm going to use. And we have our Samsung two and a half inch SSD. And you see the little clip there that holds it in place. We hold that back, we slide the SSD down into place. You'll notice this here puts pressure. And when we clip that in, this locks the SSD into place in that bracket. Again, this bracket just clips into the back of the case. And we'll go ahead and clip, get that clipped in. We'll show you where that uh, mounts. We'll show you some of the cable routing um, in the back of the case. When we have all of our components mounted, um, I'm going to go ahead and get the graphics card mounted in. We'll go ahead and very simply get our graphics card. Now this isn't a huge card, it's just the EVGA GTX 760 SC. Um, but you can see here uh, there's plenty of space for taller cards and longer cards. Um, I'll have the full dimensions of card length in the uh, right up on the review. Now I'm going to remove this upper bracket that'll give us increased airflow to our graphics cards and also just uh, eliminate you know this extra caging here because I will only be using one three and a half inch hard drive and you'll note that there are these two screws to remove this but there is also one more screw in the front of the case so by loosening the 140 millimeter top front fan I'm able to remove that screw that slides right out it is the same with the lower bracket there are the two bottom screws and there is one screw located behind the front 140 millimeter fan. So now that we have that drive cage removed, we'll go ahead and slide our hard drive back into the lower cage. And you can see the 140 millimeter front fan is right here. So that opens up all this airflow to the front of our case. It would also allow us, if there were a graphics card that would come past these hard drives, extra space for our top graphics card. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our power supply cables here to our graphics card. And the next step I'm going to get into, I will mount the CPU cooler and then we'll get into some benchmarks. Stay tuned. So here we can see everything fully installed into the chassis. Uh, one graphics card. We have that securely mounted down. Plenty of space for uh, additional graphics cards here with our expansion slots on the rear. All of our case fans including our two fans for our 240 all-in-one uh, liquid cooling unit are plugged to the three-speed fan controller on the front of the case. So we're going to control everything that way. The pump for the liquid cooler is plugged into the motherboard so that I can monitor that through the BIOS. Um, most of the cable management has been taken care of. Of course this I could just bend back over and zip tie to make that a little bit tidier. Um, but as you can see here with everything, with all the different grommets, all the different holes for, for uh, routing the cables through the case, everything is hidden very nicely. You focus on your components with the mounting bracket here for the SSD in the back of the case. We can even see our uh, statistics for our Samsung SSD. So it's a very nice feature to have that mounted there without these drive cages. It opens up the airflow on, internally in the case. We do have the one three and a half inch hard drive mounted here. No optical drives. Um, I don't really use an optical drive anymore. I do use a fan controller, but with the fan controller integrated into the case, I'm going to go ahead and give uh, that a shot so I can test that out 
and see how well that controls uh, the case fans as well as the fans on my all-in-one liquid cooling unit. We're going to go ahead and get some, uh, some performance numbers, but first we'll get our side panel put on here. We'll go ahead and get our front and top panels clipped back in. And those are just that easy to lock into place, just that easy to remove uh, for cleaning. The case is very easy to work on and we will pull off our plastic protective here on our window side panel so that we can take a really nice look inside the case, get an idea of just how large that window is, the accessibility to see our components very clearly through the window. We can see our front here has a nice curve around to it. Our buttons on the top, very nice. Very nice lines along the side of the case. Nice black and white. We're gonna go ahead and test our system inside this case, get some benchmark numbers on you, see how well these fans perform. So here we can see our white LED fans in the front of the case. One more feature that I wanted to show you with the white version of the case with the black accents, you do get the white LED fans. And on the top here, we have our three speed fan controller. You can see our lowest setting, our medium setting, and our high setting. Thank you for watching the review of the Corsair Graphite Series 780T full, cow, full, K, uh, full tower computer case. This is again a new series that is being released from Corsair. You can check out the full lineup at their website. Um, this is a very impressive case. Uh, I really liked the styling of it. I like the features of the, the added LED fans in the front um, that just give it a little bit of extra aesthetics that match the overall uh, fitment of the case. It is not just a full tower chassis that you can fit all your components in and have accessibility for fans and water cooling and um, you know long graphics cards a bunch of hard drives but it carries that very nice aesthetics it has the nice features of the quick removable side panels the large side window um, as well as the integrated fan controller um, as well as the accessibility all the ports all the features that are included this Corsair Graphite Series 780T case will be receiving the High Tech Legion Gold Award. Thank you for watching this video review and installation. Make sure that you check out HighTechLegion.com for the full review. You can also follow us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash HighTechLegion. You can also find us on Facebook. Go over there, give us a like at facebook.com forward slash HTL Reviews. And don't forget to click right at the bottom of your screen here on the subscribe button so that you can subscribe to all of our future video reviews. Thanks for watching.